Welcome on this Sunday, the 7th of August, 2022, and we welcome as our preacher this morning, Reverend Sapati Ngobo of St. Agnes Kloof. Welcome back, Umfundisi. Greetings, friends. My reflection for today will be based on Luke chapter 12, as well as Hebrews 11. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. One reality of life is waiting, waiting for someone to show up or waiting for something to happen, or maybe simply just waiting for things to change. Everyone, everywhere, at some point in their life, has waited. But another reality is that not many of us really like waiting. We often look for the fastest way to do things, the fastest way to get somewhere, or the shortest way to do it. And we want things done excellently, and we want them done right now. Because waiting has the ability to bring us fear and anxiety about what will happen. It haunts us because we are haunted by the unknown and maybe by our lack of control. And so as we read today's gospel, we see that Jesus does not eliminate waiting. If anything, Jesus is intentional about teaching his followers the importance of waiting. Jesus' concept of waiting does not seem to be embedded in simply passing time or the loss of control, but there is a sense of anticipation, of activity, of participation in the wait. The servants must be dressed for action. They must have their lamps lit. They must anticipate their opening and just being by the door as the master returns. So in many ways, one could say that Jesus possibly sees waiting as an act of faithfulness. You know, that assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen, so says the Hebrews homilist. So faith, that is what waiting is ultimately all about. And when we read these two beautiful scriptures together, both Luke 12 and Hebrews 11, we soon see that these readings describe the faithful as people who set out for new places, people who anticipate new arrivals, people who wait for change, people who continue to hope for something new. And when we follow that story about Sarah and Abraham in Hebrews 11 and in Genesis, we see that faith is portrayed as that sure confidence that pushes them out of the door onto the road in pursuit of an inheritance that God has promised them. It is because of this faith that they have the audacity to act, undertaking an unknown journey into unknown territory simply because God asked them to do so. They didn't know where they were going. They just trusted the one who had called them. And in their walking and in their waiting, God's promises were ultimately fulfilled. And somewhere along their journey with God, both Sarah and her husband were promised that they would be parents to many descendants, as many as the stars. God made a promise to them that they would be the parents of this great nation, and it didn't matter that they were both old or that Sarah was barren. They held on to that promise and continued steadfast in walking out their faith. And at that unexpected time, God granted them one child, the child of the promise called Isaac. But it was just one. And that's the funny thing and the strange thing and also the beautiful thing about waiting in active faith. They were promised multitudes of descendants. They would be parents to this great nation. And yet Sarah became mother to just one Isaac. And that was it. And they died. And yet today, we are living proof of God's fulfilled promises as Christians all over the world credit them as faithful, Abraham commonly being called the father of faith. So as Christians, we have seen the promises of God being fulfilled. 
and we have seen it sometimes or oftentimes in our own lives. For Sarah and Abraham, they never gave up on God's promise. Even when they fell into doubt they, and grew weary in their own journey of faith, God had a way to ground them and just bring them back to his promises because God's promises are far greater than many of us can imagine and can withstand the test of life and the test of time. Likewise, when we listen to the parables in Luke 12, this parable that Jesus gives us of the diligent servants, faith seems to be a posture of active and engaged alertness. It is the rightly aligned heart, that dress for action body, the lit lamp on a dark night. It is the humble willingness to steward a house we don't even possess until its rightful owner comes home. Faith is the patient ability to wait on a presence that has not yet arrived, a promise that has not yet been fulfilled. Faith is what gives us the overwhelming desire to welcome and to serve and to nourish Jesus whenever and however he makes an appearance. That is what faith is about, that active waiting for the master's joy and the master's joy-filled arrival. How then do we in our generation and in our time wait for the inbreaking or the coming of the master into our hearts and into our lives? How can we show forth the faithfulness in waiting like Sarah and Abraham did? Well, Jesus gives us a hint in Luke's gospel. He says, be dressed for action. In other words, something is about to happen right now, right here, and I want you to be a part of it. Come participate. For it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. This is for you. And Jesus also says, have your lamps lit. You see, he says that because there's something to see. Move out of the darkness. Come into Christ's marvelous light and see what is right in front of you. See what is all around you. See what is within you. For the Father wants you to have the kingdom. And Jesus says, be alert. And I don't think this is a, a threat or a punishment, but I like to think of it as an invitation to be blessed because blessed are those whom he finds alert. Jesus is not inviting us to be awake or to be ready or to be watchful just for the sake of it, but Jesus is actually calling us to be fully alive in the here and in the now and alive to his presence. Maybe if we model the diligent servants that Jesus teaches us about, those who perceive unexpected arrivals as an opportunity to serve, we too are being active in our faith. The servants were not irritated when something new happens, but they were open to receive the one who was to come. And maybe this for us can start with just beginning to see the small interruptions in our life as opportunities to allow the master to break into our lives. For me, it can just be that child that interrupts when we work. It can be that neighbor that knocks at your door for some sugar. It can be the elderly person who just walks in front of you so slowly, but just needs somebody to walk alongside them, whatever it may be. When we are open to the unexpected, the master can reveal himself to us. So ponder on these things. Ponder on what ways you can be open and you can be active in your faith and in your weight. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.